thank you, DJ. Thank you for, for the, the depression. depression. <laughs> Brunch, hit it, boys. You look like me, and I look like you. <laughs> you, as you were sitting down, you were like, "What's?" You're wearing a, a pink tank top that really pops on camera. Follow us on YouTube. Uh, it, you're, it really pops. You got no sleeves. No is, sleeves on that, this tank top. That is definitely something that I would would do in a past life. But as we've gone over many times, our our properties transfer it over time. Crazy. Like we just like. Like we suck the life out of each other. That's right. That one's going on. Yeah. Brunch out of context. Uh, and like we just like take things from each other and and give things to the other person. And yeah, I'm I'm dressed in like a fucking long sleeve drab drab pants, long sleeve flannel. I'm only wearing long sleeves because I I don't want to do a full tattoo reveal. Ah, very smart. You know what we should do is we should make this into a brunch meme. Maybe brunch out of context. You didn't think you were getting two shout outs in the mm -hmm. first eight seconds. This uh, should do. Uh, take the uh, Tom Wamsgans taking Logan Roy's chicken, eating it, putting on his sunglasses, saying, thank you, Logan. <laughs> thank you for the chicken. <laughs> and walk, walking away. You could do like you like like grabbing the chicken off my plate and it's like thank you dj thank you for, for the, the depression, depression. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and everything like me because like my posture has gotten so shitty just like thank you pete thank you for the height <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's uh it's unfortunate <laughs> uh, it's 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 unfortunate for me i feel like i'm getting all the bad things because... are you gonna get yeah are you gonna get fat at some point no, nah, well, I hope not. I mean, like that's never that's never been something that I've dealt with in my life. Like, mm. thank, thank, thank the Lord. Never had any problems with my weight. Like, I have pro I have problems uh, keeping keeping yeah. weight on. No, the so, dude, like, no when joke. That, I, when that happens, like, I'll really have to like re reconsider this friendship. Obviously, there isn't the societal shaming aspect of but i mean i've had friends who have struggled to keep weight on mm -hmm. and especially when it's a goal for a million different reasons you have to change medicines and like it's just frustrating as uh as fuck I, I do have an apology by the way speaking of fashion i declared famously on this podcast at some point maybe i can't remember if i said it that uh, this was going to be a no short summer yeah, you I have that. taken a hard turn on that, and oh, yeah. I've been almost exclusively shorts. I mean, I mean, I, you don't have to apologize for that. I, not to me, at least, maybe to the listeners. But like, I'd like to apologize to specific listeners. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, number one, I never believed it. Like you, you crush shorts, mm -hmm. and uh, number two, like it just seems like a miserable thing to commit to. Yeah, but the the reason I th thought is, I mean, I've. Uh, not been keeping in the the best shape, but I I am working on it. I've been breaking a sweat every day, which is nice. Uh, I'll be honest. Yeah, I saw an old, I sent you an old picture of us um, from probably like eight years ago at this point when we did TV for NBC Sports Boston. Yeah, and you were skinny as fuck. I, I so I didn't realize that bad. I've ever been skinny. I always thought like so. I I, I I don't remember you ever being like that skinny, but you were very skinny. Uh, so I'll just say for sure, like I definitely have body image issues as I think a lot of people, uh, do. So, uh, there have definitely been points where I've been like kind of skinny mm -hmm. and at the time absolutely didn't know. And I guarantee you in, at that time I was probably, cause I, I, is it, I do remember what you're talking about and I would have been wearing like a medium t-shirt mm -hmm. or whatever that was maybe like a little baggy on me yeah. and I probably felt horrible about myself yeah i mean i remember i mean i remember from podcasts you'd be like uh I, like i'm i'm in like i'm always I'm in, between I'm medium and large I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm between medium and large like my legs were big but like the rest of my body's skinny or whatever like you looked so skinny in that picture and it just like didn't look right to me you and i don't know if it's like recency bias because i've gotten used to how you look now but like i think you look better and and like healthier the way that you look now i need i'll find a picture there, there's one picture where my body I think was pretty saw because I've been, when I have looked like that, I agree. It doesn't look right. Mm -hmm. Something's off. When I was super, super heavy into spin and I was also doing a bit of lifting, I didn't have the greatest body in the world, 
but like my arms fit into a t-shirt properly. And there's a picture of me. I'm wearing a t-shirt that I can't really share this picture anymore. It's a canceled picture. One of my favorite t-shirts used to be a, uh, it was Elmo. And it said, hola, bitches. Have no idea what that shirt meant, but I was crazy about it. Why is it canceled? I feel like wearing a, I don't know. No. Is, is, is bitches back? Is the bitch bitches back? back? Yeah. Per Elton John? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know. I don't wear shirts with swears on them anymore. I used to. That's I not had, a swear. Bitches is not a swear. Bitch as a ver- We've been over this. And I've always. Well, been, you, it's, you, it's weird that I ever owned that shirt because I have famously always been out on bitch as a noun. But, but, but like bitches is an all encompassing term. Like, and, hello, my bitches. Yeah, hello, my bitches. Yeah, like that. that's not derogatory. Uh, yeah, but. I, I I think that the way don't overthink it. I don't want to put. I, it's just that I don't want to put words in Elmo's mouth. I'll tell you what. We don't know that he necessarily said that. I'll tell you what. I've but, seen people throwing around the R word like crazy on Twitter. It's insane how and much that, that word, word is, is back making a and comeback being and it's thrown insane. at you. <laughs> yeah, it, it, and not that anybody ever deserves that word being said. In the case that you were called it. Again, there is no way that that person could have been justified in using that word for you. But especially then, he was using it to call you stupid. Yes. And after you he were, didn't get a joke. And you and were he, not being stupid. And he spelt it word. He spelt the word wrong. Really? He spelt the word wrong when he w- while using a meme that spelt the word correctly three times in the meme. Oh boy! So it was spelled correctly three times. Mm. He copied or saved saved that file, p- pasted it into Twitter. And then typed out the word and spelt it wrong to call me stupid. Man. Unbelievable stuff. It was not a <laughs> stupid. You just joked. You said a, that, that you had a, a low the, hanging fruit. The, the joke. Golden Knights yeah. were like a family uh, team and that you're thinking of like your dad who grew up watching them <laughs> yeah. and everything. Yeah. I uh, actually a friend of the podcast. You don't know him. Uh, Tom Giles texted me and said uh, uh, thought Pete's. Uh, Golden Knights dad joke was very funny. I don't think it was very funny. I, it feels bad. I feel bad like saying this because I made the joke. But like, you ever make a joke and you and you like you kind of like wonder about whether or not you should like if it's if it's good enough for you to send and then you and then send someone it someone likes so, it and, then, and you judge them for yes. it. Every yeah. time I've gone viral, dude. <laughs> Think of, we, we've I, gone through this every time anything I've done is blown up where yeah. I'm like, that's what you fuckers <laughs> find funny? Yeah. I accidentally sent that. Yeah, there were like a few like, holy shit, like your best work. And I was like, oh, man. That like, sucks, dude. Yeah. That means like that, that means that either they're stupid or they think you're stupid. And I truly like we're fucking brothers. We fuss and fight or whatever. I never think that you're like stupid or don't have a good sense of humor. Like, especially for Twitter, you're probably 50 miles ahead of the average tweet joke sender. I mean, I think that I've just like sent and done so many of the jokes that now like I've I've kind of like gotten a lot of the low hanging fruit out of the way. And I'm like, ah, like I don't need to do that. And mm-hmm. so I, I I put a little bit more thought into stuff now. Also, I just said we fuss and fight as like a turn of phrase we don't really fuss and fight we no. we'll fu- every now and then we'll fuss a teeny bit i mean like we fight sometimes we we fought like i would say like we had a fight like a week ago we fought recently and i got a terrible sunburn because of it i was about to go <laughs> on a boat so mad you and forgot the whole to time the, it was via text and the whole time i was like i'm not having this conversation right now i have to go on a boat and then like you'd respond and i'd be like peter i'm getting on this boat and i'm not going to respond and then you'd be like okay i just feel whatever and i'd be like that's it peter that was the i think that was like my favorite I did fight send a it, lot was, of, it was it was I'm, probably like the like the maybe like the the most charged fight that we've had in a while maybe ever and you literally kept sending i think you sent like at least eight to ten i'm not i'm about to get on a boat <laughs> i'm not having this conversation i'm going to P- I am boarding the boat. <laughs> Pete, like, I'm real. I really have to get on this boat. <laughs> Pete, we are leaving the dock. Pete, this is a sailboat. I am participating in this sail. And we did. And then you're like, uh, for the last time, I'm getting on this boat. And then like an eight hour gap in communications. And then like the next text that I got was, 
I got so fucking sunburned on the boat. <laughs> yeah, because it was while I was uh, applying sunscreen, and then we got into this uh, little spat, and it was the bottom. It, I, I got my face, and I got my neck and everything mercifully, but my like legs and knees, because famously I was wearing shorts, got fucking smoked. It's just now... Uh, what is this a week or two weeks ago this was like two weeks this ago is, maybe no this is like a week or week and a half maybe uh yeah just starting to peel finally okay okay like i got destroyed so badly in Peely fact Peely boys because i have a uh, the tattoo is going crazy uh that's uh, don't touch it man i don't know don't, it's, it's, like, it's just it. about done now but like i was so afraid when my tattoo was healing that like when I would clear stuff out of the way, mm-hmm. like, God, oh, did I break the tattoo? Yeah, <laughs> you know how hard you have to try to like. That's, to, yeah, dude. I remember uh, there was a uh, a professional hockey player named uh, Ryan Spooner. Mm-hmm. Got uh, great, great guy. Got called up to the Bruins one game. Uh, he had gotten a tattoo the day before, and I was like, "Shit, what are you gonna do? You can't sweat in it." And he was like. What? Who cares? I'm just gonna play. And I was like, I don't know. Like, I got. I. I look at me. I have a tattoo, and you can't sweat for blow. And he, he was like, Shut up, uh, bitch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, truly, he's a lot younger than me, so he wasn't like he. We. He, he was very respectful, but he was like, I, I think you have to do like real. Like they tell you that stuff. I think you have to do really, really bad stuff to fuck up the go, healing like, of it. S- sit in the sun and get on a boat and be mad and get fucking get super sunburned. Yeah. I'm going on a boat. Or he, he, the one thing that I like wouldn't do is uh, he, my tattoo artist was like, don't go to the gym and leave it exposed in like the first three days because that's how you get staph infection. Oh, interesting. Yeah, you don't want an actual infection. Uh, I will be on a boat. So this is a late episode. This is dropping Thursday. I, uh, If you're listening to this in timely fashion, it's possible that I'm on a boat as we speak. Ooh. I'm doing another Thursday boating. Who do you know with all these boats? Uh, I'm in a little boat group. Do you not know this? Uh, I know like two. I know like one person that you hang out with that has a boat. Am I allowed to say it or guess? Uh, I don't want to like expose this person for having a boat because everybody try- wants a friend with a boat. I'm trying to think, who do I go ahead? It, uh, Nora. So Nora is, is n- in the boat crew. Nora was the boat plug. Okay, she got me okay. into this group. I know Nicole Yang. Yep, Nicole Yang goes on this boat. Okay. It's, Whose boat is it? Uh, David Filipov, a longtime journalist. Okay. And it is a just group of people, mostly Boston Globe related. It's like Globies and friends of Globies, mostly media types, though. And so typically it'll be me, David. No, I don't go super often, but when I go, like, uh, David, Nicole, Julian Benbow. Okay. Uh, Nora has since moved to the Big Apple, so she's not there a ton. But she was my uh, gateway drug to the boating life. And it's so fun. And I hope that I can get into the rhythm of going often enough that I don't need to be explained things too many times. Because it is super fun contributing. And because it's like... It's is not, this a sailboat? Yeah. Oh, so you're like participating. Yeah. In so the it's boating. not just like a f- hey DJ, you want to feel included? Go do this. It's like DJ, if you don't do this, then nothing happens. So, so it's a real go- Joey and Rachel, right? And there are for sure are moments where he'll be like, okay, walk over to that, and there should be like a rope behind you when you turn around, and there's like seventy ropes behind you, and you feel like a real idiot. <laughs> but I don't know. It's fun, like learning how to tie certain knots and stuff and then once you're out there the typically nicole uh picks the music and it's always a very good selection nicole yang uh great sports takes and uh great music taste I'm, big vampire weekend guy i've never met nicole yang and i remember you being like dude how do you like not know this person yeah because i was like wait how is she not in the i believe the first time i met her she said uh so she is a uh, patriots reporter for the boston globe and one of my favorite football writers because she'll matter of factly be like yeah mac jones wasn't very good last week and that's something that the not to disparage any other football media but it's the football media can be very very positive and very like oh well Let's not get on these guys for having three bad seasons in a row. Uh, so she'll like say things as they are, so much so that like I've texted like my former bosses, being like, "Yo, you know who you should have on TV? 
not me, <laughs> Nicole Yang. And they took your word on the first part. Right, yeah. They were like <laughs> 50 steps ahead of you. Come on in. Let's talk about it. You had me your in the first half. Idea. Didn't read the second half. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's a, it's a good time. And I had a, I had a goal the first COVID summer, which was like do something water related once a week. Wow. Was not able to stick to that. Maybe got in the water like twice all summer that that summer. But I'm trying to get out, uh, live this boat life as uh, often as I can. So as as much as they have me, you you should come out though. I've anyway, never been invited. <laughs> I meant to say, first time I met Nicole Yang, I believe she said she was a brunch listener. Ooh. I don't know if she's still a brunch listener, but at some point, I believe she was a brunch listener. Uh, big supporter. Whenever I say like, oh, we're thinking of doing this, we're thinking of doing this, she's very good at being like, that's a good idea. That's the thing. I only suggest our good ideas, though. Okay, good. So, uh, well, Nicole, if you're listening, what's up? We should meet sometime. Uh, also, you should meet the most comfortable <laughs> jeans ever made because... Mugsy? Yeah, that's Ooh! right. We got a Mugsy jean partnership going on today. Uh, Mugsy Psych. makes the most comfortable jeans, chinos, shorts, and joggers ever. You like buttery, soft, patented stretch materials? Mm -hmm. Let me guess what company you're going to want to shack up with. Not only are Muggsy jeans stylish, but they're insanely comfortable. They're never too baggy, never too tight. They're frankly the best thing to happen to legs. Since, Since Tina chairs. Turner. What's, what's Tina Turner's relationship with legs? Are you kidding? Uh, she has like some of the most famous legs in the world. Her legs were insured for an outrageous amount of money. Oh, okay. She had great legs. Awesome. Well, congrats to her. Is she alive? Recently passed. Ah, RIP then. Yeah. Um, never in human history have legs been so spoiled by pure softness and comfort while looking so damn good. The guys at Muggsy have one mission in life. Give every guy the confidence to walk blindly into their closet, cover their eyes, reach out, and know whatever they pick will have them looking good and feeling even better. You will literally never have to shop anywhere else ever again. That's in the copy, but I don't know if that's true. Like they don't, they didn't specify you will never have to sh literally never have to shop anywhere else for pants. I was gonna say like they literally just, medicine. Li yeah, like if you you want to eat food, I don't think Muggsy's gonna have you covered. They do. They I do don't pants. believe they're edible. No. Yeah. They, Although they people will say like, if this happens, I'll eat my hat. <laughs> that's true, and you never know. Like if you order some Muggsy jeans, maybe they come with some snacks in the pocket. Mm. I I can't can't say. Uh, we're still waiting on our Muggsy care package, but from, I know. from everything that we've been told from the wash guys, they are incredible. I'm uh, really, I'm very much looking forward to them. Yeah, same here. Uh, especially because uh, they also just dropped their Cool Max denim that are like air conditioners for your legs during the summer. They're breathable jeans that were designed with lightweight fibers to ensure a cool breeze with every single step. If you wear jeans, in the summer, you know that sometimes that shit can be uncomfortable and mm -hmm. your legs can get real sweaty. So the Cool Max denim is probably what you're going to want for uh, these backyard barbecues or these uh, these nighttime bars during the summer. So go to Muggsy.com to get 10% off using promo code BRUNCH. That's 10% off some of the most premium jeans, chinos, swimwear, and shorts on the internet. Muggsy also offers free shipping in return, so there's absolutely no risk of giving them a try. If you're in the Chicago, Boston, D.C. or Austin, Texas area, make sure to head downtown and check out their storefront as well. Easy vibes every time. Enjoy the beer. Enjoy a beer with the boys while you shop. I think we're going to be doing that at some point in, in the coming months uh, because they just opened a, uh, a store in downtown Boston. Oh, man. Yes. So we're going to we ask Brett. We were like, yo, can we link up with them, please? Yeah. yeah. For a company that like I know that they're they're like sponsoring the show and, and you know, kind of hooking us up and and all that. We're like trying to get in on that circle, and uh, apparently we're going to be able to do that in the coming months. So uh, if you're in the Boston area, Chicago, D.C., Austin, Texas, they've got a store storefront near you. Head down there. Cool vibes. They got beer. What else do you need? I know. For real. I can't I can't wait for that. Um, the the uh, Muggsy will be good, too, for this summer because they're comfortable jeans. I am trying to get away from shorts, but I can't seem to shake them. But mm -hmm. when I wear my predominantly long pants, they're going to be Muggsies. I can't wait. They asked me what size I am. I said, depends on the day. But those things stretch what's, and those things breathe. What's your what's your jean size? What is my jean size? Uh, we're getting personal. I think 
I think if I needed one jean for like the next three years that I think I could wear every day, mm-hmm. I would say thirty four, thirty two. Okay. Do you know mine? It's uh, it's it's memorable. Thirty thirty. Yeah. Whoa. Yep. Thirty thirty. You your, know what? Your boy's a box. <laughs> uh, this is crazy. One of my friends lives. His address is his pants. What the fuck? Because his street he lives on is a type of pants, and the number is uh, the number is, is like the size the si- his size. <laughs> like, is it like a is it like thirty thirty something or like thirty thirty four something like something? that? Okay, yeah, that is that's hilarious. So I know not only his address but his pants. That is amazing. very well. That's awesome. Let me ask you this. Uh, do you put people's addresses in your contacts on no, your phone? No. I've I, been doing that for a while. Really? Now. Because I mean, have you not noticed that I ask you for your address every time I go to your place? Like, that is true. I've only been to your place. I mean, I've been to your place probably like a dozen times, mm-hmm. and I ask every time. I try to keep like uh, in Arrested Development, they're talking about uh, the uh, Job, Will Arnett's character, and they're like, because Job's always dropping by her place, and they're like, "Wait, where does Job live?" In some boat, he says, "I always envisioned in a lighthouse." <laughs> <laughs> I um, I, I don't, I don't know anybody's address, but I do know where some people live. I have to, so I put like I can get there, but I like without GPS, which is kind of crazy. Because I need is, GPS for everything. I'll I, my my phone. I pretty much load up with uh, people's addresses because there's nothing more frustrating than this will happen a lot with family stuff. Where they'll be like, okay, we're going to so-and-so's place. And I'll be like, I could get to the town. I don't know where they fucking live. And I can't find the email address and or the email or anything. Very, very frustrating. So, folks, sound off. Let me know if uh, you're saving uh, addresses. Uh, we saw Flamin' Hot, the Eva Longoria-directed corporate biographical dramedy that is streaming on Disney Plus and Hulu. And we're going to discuss that movie and also explore the question of, are there now too many corporate biographical dramedies? Because even in the last few months, we've had Air, we've had Blackberry, mm-hmm. we've had Flame and Hot. We, uh, when we think of the classic film genre mm-hmm. of corporate biographical dramedy, you got the social network. Yeah, That's course. like the great... Are there too many, or are we running into the ground the, how did this thing come along and get made? The founder I'll also throw in there, and there's an upcoming Madden one. Um, I don't think I don't think the, the genre is ever going to die, because I think business stories are some of the most interesting stories to be told, because they, they always involve egos, they always involve, like, money, they always involve, like, shady shit. And so that's always going to exist, because it's always, it's, it's very frequently a compelling story. But I think there is – we are approaching maybe like a short-term saturation point. And there is – there has been a lot of – a lot of like – I don't want to say like goofy but, um, you know, like zany. Yes, they're they're always quirky. Yeah, right. In their own ways. I mean, the social network is pound for pound a fucking incredible movie. That movie is, and I don't is think almost that, perfect. And I, I love Blackberry so much. I finally fucking remembered, by the way. Remember when I said Blackberry was the social network meets mm-hmm. air with one other thing and I couldn't think of what it was? The founder was the other okay, thing. Yeah, yep. Because there is some uh there's some Ray Kroc to uh, Jim's character. Yeah, there's there's some like I know what I'm doing. You fucking idiots don't. You Get have out the of my you way. have the passion. I am the businessman. We need each other. Yeah. Uh, so, but you are right that all these have a little like wink and a nod sort of thing. And I liked Flame and Hot uh, a lot. I liked I, it way more than I thought I would. Yeah. So it it is a 68 on Rotten Tomatoes with an 88 audience score. That sounds. About I right. think that is pretty accurate yeah i mean like i wouldn't i wouldn't say it's that not an 88 out of 100 but it's like right well 88 percent of people should like it correct yeah and, and like it's it's inoffensive it is uh you know it, it's a little corny and it's like a little cheesy and over the top dramatic at, at some point and like you're not gonna it's probably exactly what you think it is. Yeah. When you watch the trailer or if like somebody gives you a, an elevator pitch, you can probably envision exactly what it is and what it's going to be. But like it's still an enjoyable watch and it's one of those 
It's one of those movies that definitely benefits from being on streaming where you where like the the it's kind of like an airplane experience where your expectations are lowered a little bit in terms of like the bar for enjoyment. Uh, you know, it, it's definitely not in the Blackberry realm where like Blackberry is an awesome movie with awesome performances and i will recommend that to everybody that everybody. i come across um this it's one the tears for fears of movies this one's more just like hey that's nice and i'm glad that i watched and learned about this story this is closer to air and i think that air is excellent i, I think that air is like the best ice cream in that it's not Ice cream isn't the best food, but it's sugary and it's it's not packed. Although ice cream famously does have protein, so maybe bad example. But like air is like a great dessert where Blackberry and the Social Network are like actual real ass meals. This is closer to air than it is to Blackberry or the Social Network because, and this was an issue you had with air, with these corporate biographical dramedies. I do need there to be a rise and a fall or some stakes. And he's, yeah, just stakes. And obviously in the case of Richard Montañez, if you've listened, if you've know that story at all, which uh, my favorite internet radio show, Time Crisis, discusses that story. I didn't, I didn't know it. What, had, I didn't yeah. until I listened to Time Crisis. That's like a very popular topic on that show for some reason. Okay. Well, I mean, you, that's a very random show, so that sounds about right. Uh, they do a lot of like corporate food talk. I didn't find out about the, that's a really interesting subject. I would listen to a fucking whole podcast Dude, about you corporate food. Listen to Time Crisis. They do, like Oreos, fuck, fucking like Reese's. They do all this deep dives. Yeah. Um, I only found out about this story when it was announced that Eva Longoria was doing a story about the janitor that invented flaming hot Cheetos. So like that, uh, that was interesting, and I wanted to see how it happened. But like, obviously, the stakes aren't very high because you could be sitting on your couch eating flaming hot Cheetos watching this movie. They exist, <laughs> right? <laughs> they you, happen. You know, it worked out. <laughs> you heard of them. So uh, like. Yeah, I was actually pissed that I didn't have Flaming Hot Chinos in my house while watching this movie. Mm -hmm. It is, It does have the founder effect where you're watching this movie and you're like, Get damn, McDonald's. I, I could really go for this. Although with the founder, you feel a little bit more guilty because it's like the, the, the morals of... Oh. Where's this money going? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, this does do a better job maybe than Air does of uh, packing in the stakes, especially, I mean, when you're talking about the guys that were working for Nike versus Richard Montanez, which... These guys had high paying jobs that they hoped to not lose. And obviously that's a serious thing for somebody. But Richard Montanez was facing more literal adversity yeah, and like, like extreme adversity. Can't get a job, has a family to support, uh, like has like family on basically ass. like caving in on him. Just like real needs to have that fucking million dollar idea. Uh this doesn't have not only for him, but like for his friends and yeah. all the people that he works with. Mm -hmm. Like he he did have real stakes to to combat. Where like if Sonny Vaccaro didn't sign Michael Jordan, he probably would have been fucking fine. They he would have just kept on being unnoticed and right. wasn't making so much that they would have to fire him. Uh some good performances. Uh, didn't see Dennis Haysbert doing this movie. I know. Wow. And he was great. <laughs> he was really good, yeah. I love Dennis Haysbert. And uh, didn't see Bill Oakley from Saul. Who is that? Bill Oakley from Saul oh, is the, yes, the rival yes, yes, lawyer. Yeah, 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 He's yeah. the guy that uh, I did not. Just terrible hair. I watched this whole movie and didn't know that that was Tony Shalhoub. I, I mean, I th think that I would have. I would have recognized his face, but you did text me and you're like, Oh, you hadn't seen it yet when yeah, I said okay. Yeah, but like uh Tony Schlub was was pretty good in this. Yeah. Like fine. Yeah. They, they they had some good actors doing a good job. The main the main character, I don't I, I don't know that guy's name, but uh, uh Jesse Garcia. Jesse Garcia, he was uh he was fantastic. I thought that he gave an action packed performance for that role. Yeah. I thought right. he was truly delightful, which again, this is going for more of the air thing than it is the social network thing. Yeah. So I thought that he was just very, very well animated for a character who spent a lot of the movie in dire straits. So it, it helped to, it was definitely conveying that look, shit needs to happen for this guy. And we know that it ends up happening, but the, he made sure that the, even the, the low moments still were enthusiastic honestly though like there are stakes in this movie because 
most people have not heard that guy's name and they spend so much time in the movie talking about like how even if you do the right things and like work really fucking hard, like racism in America and the system in America doesn't always reward the people that work hard and deserve it. So like there's this movie easily could have been about like could have been about the story of the guy that that invented flaming hot cheetos and never like got the credit for it yeah you know like it could have been a smash hit but he didn't get the credit for it this movie also did a i believe this was maybe based on a book by richard montanez or something it seemed as though this i mean the the, the movie is literally narrated by the richard montanez character but it seemed that this story is told through his lens told through his lens because they speak extremely high of the engineer who takes richard montanez under his wing he's played by dennis haysberg and i mean what CEO is ever portrayed as unflailingly <laughs> positive and nice and not racist as Roger Enrico is in this movie? I, I know. And I well, was waiting for like it to break out of being a dream sequence because this guy is a janitor who's calling the CEO of the company being like, hi, I have a snack idea because I, I work at Frito-Lay. Yeah. And he's like. You must tell me all about it, buddy. I, I love you. And like, especially after in the like our introduction to uh, Tony Shalhoub's character, the the CEO. Like our first introduction to him, into him is like, oh, he's this like kind of ruthless guy who will do what is necessary to keep his company on top. Like he'll do layoffs. He'll like he'll shut down plants and then everything you hear after that is pretty fucking glowingly positive. It overall though is. Very inspiring because there's a lot of – they establish very well that everybody views uh, Richard as like, oh, yeah, he's got a great idea. I'm sure he's got a great idea. What is it now? Like one of those types. And like, oh, really? His second day of work, he's going and he's trying to skip the line, trying to talk to all these higher ups. We're not supposed to talk to them. This fucking annoying go-getter type or whatever. And – I don't know. Like, there's something inspiring about a guy that's just, I mean, he's desperate and has to make something happen for himself. But he's also just passionate. Right, like, right. Yeah. And I think that, and who knows how these things actually unfolded, but clearly his character inspires a lot of people and makes a really good impression on them that, like, yeah, fuck, why the hell shouldn't we see this thing through? Yeah, well, I mean, like, it, you can you can see it, too, and I think they could do a pretty good job of telling that story where it's like, this dude is fucking struggling and he really wants to like live legitimately and he just wants an opportunity to prove himself regardless of what that opportunity is like he'll throw his weight behind it and like when he does get that opportunity he's very passionate about about like doing the job keeping the job and being grateful for having the job Mm. and trying to make it into something more so like i think they do a really good job of telling that story and like providing his motivations and not not having it be like why the fuck is this guy so excited about being a janitor? Yeah, dude, there's even something sweet about like he that he like wants this job so badly. And Matt Walsh plays the exas his exasperated boss, <laughs> who at all times is like, Montanez, where are you? Yeah. Oh fuck! Oh god! Oh no! I did love the wink at the end, uh, like uh, when every when the, it comes to its conclusion, mm-hmm. Matt Walsh has like a big like gotcha wink yeah, and yeah, it's like it's, uh, it's per- de- delivered so perfectly and like so goofy and so out of character for that character that it was it was really sweet this is very much like a matt walsh movie yes yeah so good for him uh yeah i overall it's not the greatest movie in the world no. and i could have used some i mean if there's no real pushback then there's no real pushback but i could have used some and then somebody claimed they came up with that recipe, and then blah blah. blah. So it was overall again the, the the stakes in the beginning are well established, but could have used a lawsuit or like a couple of bad tweets out of Richard <laughs> or something. My uh, my big pushback is in the first five minutes, the narrator, uh, the Richard character, says that he invented the most popular snack in history, and. I I did I'll tell you what I grew up in a an extremely like white uh, white 
Asian place. Not a ton of so maybe maybe it was like a uh, maybe it's like a demographic thing. But like I don't even know if there were flaming hot Cheetos in my local I, supermarket. I, I grew up in a like very Hispanic high school yeah. and like schooling system, and like I thought that flaming hot Cheetos were a recent thing. Yeah, I didn't. I, they. they Maybe they've gotten a lot not, more popular recently. I, think I they don't have. think I, I, I don't think I knew what they were growing up. No, me neither. And I'd never had them. Like the it, only so, spicy stuff was uh, the Andy Caps hot fries. Yes, yeah, and those are fucking awesome. Those are great. Uh, They'd probably kill me now. May, make a movie about that. No, uh, yeah, like I, I mean, even even still, even knowing what Flamin' Hot Cheetos is now, like they're extremely popular. But I, I definitely wouldn't say that they're the most popular snack in in history maybe the numbers would prove me wrong but like that's quite the statement to make in the first five minutes of the movie i don't know man if you if you were to be like all right word association jack harlow like one of the first few things i'd say is like flaming hot cheetos that guy's always doing flaming hot cheetos i know uh lil Z- lil zan lil zan uh, just got- a lot of celebrities are real like have lil zan got hospitalized because he ate too many flaming flaming hot cheetos that's Right, that's right. And now there's the flaming hot Cheetos okay. macaroni and cheese. I didn't see that. I'm telling. I, I would not have that. I I've tr- never had flaming hot Cheetos. I try. I actually tried to make flaming hot Cheetos chicken, like uh, probably about six months ago, where I just fucking crushed up all the Cheetos mm-hmm. and then and then tried to bread the chicken with it. Yeah, it didn't work out. Uh, but like, I, I think that's a pretty good idea. You said that this movie made you want flaming hot Cheetos. It sure did. This movie made me want street corn. Yes, they do a lot of street corn. Elote, in this. elote, so good, man. I'm Google most popular snack in history. It's Twizzlers. <laughs> what? Would, seriously, what would your guess be? Twizzlers. What? What odds can I get on Twizzlers? What the fuck? What? I, I googled what is the most popular snack in the world, and it says chocolate. Bang. Case close. <laughs> Hold on. I'm 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 looking um this is from Taste Tasting Table. Uh they've got a like a actual list here and I, I trust this one. Twenty five most popular snacks in America. Let me see. Best selling chip brands in the United States? That's fucking. I mean, this one says kettle, kettle chips. That's just not true. Let's see. I think that's what I'm getting to. Uh, this is a list in no particular order. That doesn't help. Yeah, it's just like oh, you know, your your Lay's, your Cape Cod. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do best selling, best selling snack in the world, because I'm getting like this is my favorite. Best selling snack in the world. Yeah, no, like flaming hot Cheetos is not on this list. There's no way that it tops like Doritos or like regular Frito Lay prod- products. So th- that's quite the statement. Yeah, I don't. Uh, this this uh, this list says that M and M's are the highest selling candy in the world, which I believe. Yo, I can I can I can buy bl- uh, I can buy that. M and M's, Hershey's, Reese's, Oreo. Yeah, you know what's terrible? I've. Uh, I've got a, a a pretty messed up relationship with Chex Mix, and I've been able to break out of it for a little bit. Mm-hmm. But now I'm just going crazy on uh, Monster Trail Mix from Target. Have you ever discussed that? I don't think Have so. you ever had Monster Trail Mix? No. It is... What makes it Monster? It. That's a good question. I think it's just like... Don't talk to me until I've had my Monster Trail <laughs> Mix, maybe. Uh it is. So it's from Target, okay. and it's uh, peanuts. You know who works at Target? Target lady Judy. Who's Judy? From uh, from Flamin' Hot. She works in the tar- Target warehouse. Judy from Flamin' Hot. Oh His yeah, wife. yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. Uh, Monster Trail Mix is peanuts, okay, raisins, yep, M and M's, yep, chocolate chips, yep, peanut butter chips. Peanut butter chips. Okay, I, you had me. I was like, I've been eating a lot of trail mix recently as well, and you had me going until that final thing. You're out on the peanut butter chips. No, I was saying like I've been eating that whatever oh. that is, uh, but I the peanut butter chips were not not included. 
I've pivoted to a slightly healthier uh, version, which is the classic combination of just uh, peanuts and raisins. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I do think that raisins are the MVP of trail mix. Definitely. It, it, it don't happen without raisins. Yeah, right. And raisins, because trail mix essentially is peanut butter and jelly. No one thinks of it that way, but really they are because it's peanuts and then just chewing That's up some true. grapes. And to, if you, I only know, have noticed this from when I do just peanuts and raisins. Yeah. That combination in your mouth, you're like, damn, if I ain't doing some peanut butter and jelly right now. And then it's the chocolate and all that shit that makes it gourmet. Mm -hmm. And typically there's a whole lot of salt in it. Try trail mix uh, brought to you by uh, brunch. If, what movies would you want from corporate biographical dramedies? Because I think at some point there's going to be a Netflix one, even though I don't know what the story is there or really care about it. I will do. Uh, I'll, I'll absolutely take. I know you said they're do, they're doing a Madden one, but yeah. I, I would do like a EA Sports in general, just because EA Sports was at such a fucking height of its powers in the like mid aughts and it has a rise a uh, rise and a fall correct and like now we're in the fall like it sucks EA sports sucks ass we've been in the fall bro. we've been in the fall um so like i'm i'm interested to see the madden one i feel like it's going to be about just like i would imagine it's just like about the height of madden i want to see the rise and fall of ea sports that is a and, very good one and like working all the bands yes yeah good charlotte some has of those to be involved. good charlotte uh Bubba sparks uh, who sang, oh, Ellen, what can I do? You remember that song? No. I think it was in an NHL game. I said that to you like you wouldn't have played an NHL game. Yeah. Da, 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 but also... Hot, like, hot heat? Oh, hot, oh. hot heat, yes, with MVP baseball. Yeah. Uh, but there is a a recent like wrinkle that would make that an even more interesting story, too, with the... Uh, with the name and likeness? Name and likeness, NIL deals. Wow. I love this. EA Sports is a good one. You know what would be a great one? What? Krispy Kreme. Why? Because that was like a cool thing, got huge, blew up, went public, couldn't hack it. Really? Okay. You don't know that? Like Krispy Kreme, it still exists. But yeah, like only in gas stations. But it's like gas station ass. Yeah. Donut I, do now. I do remember when they opened up Krispy Kreme like around, around here? here. People went fucking bonkers. Right. Because there was all this buzz about yeah. like, yo, they were the like in and out of donuts. You know, no, you know what they were? Thing. You know what they were? What? Fucking uh, Yingling. Remember when we got Yingling here and everybody was like, yo, we fucking got Yingling. Let's go. And then people drank Yingling and they were like, what the fuck? Yingling sucks. It's not good. I used to be on a... Krispy Kreme is better than Yingling. Definitely. I used to be on a radio station uh, that... I, I won't name it. You won't be able to guess what it is. Uh, <laughs> and I was talking one show about how like Yingling sucks yeah it's the it's worst not good. it's not the worst but it's not good and then it's one of my coworkers bad beer texted me and was like lol just a heads up like yingling is a sponsor oh, no. so <laughs> make sure and i was like what's done is done <laughs> <laughs> like it's uh, like am i supposed to start lying now <laughs> like just kidding love it it's i don't like no yingling. it's no i've i haven't had a yingling i believe since like the first year that I tried it. Another one that I think that I'd like to see is, uh, I don't know if this has been made. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, Napster. Ah, uh, good one. You know that I did my National History Day thing on Napster yeah, versus Metallica. That not me whatsoever. I did it, na there, it was a three poster board thing. Left was Metallica. Right was Napster. Middle was Napster versus Metallica. Mm -hmm. And man, I think they gave... It was like the best one that anybody did, but I think they still gave me like a B because they were like, you just fucking chose a thing that you already knew yeah. about and you didn't do any research and there's no bibliography or anything. You just fucking know about all that shit and you did it. And I was like, mm, prove it. This is a recent one, but what about Quibi? Quibi would be cool, but I just don't know if that like there's enough there. I like... It would all. It would just be all about, all about like how they raised their money and then just didn't fucking do anything with it. I was thinking this is uh, in in the same like. Oh no, uh, Papa John's. No, oh, because Papa John's is the one that I was. Movie thinking. Pass. 
Movie Pass would be movie a great Pass movie. Movie Pass would be incredible. Yo, we should make a movie about we Movie should. Pass and just like play the guys and it, like we should do a fictional account. No, what we should do is we should play Pass. us doing the podcast about Movie Pass and just be like. We should be narrating. This is what narrates it. The yes, podcast narrates yes. it. We yes. tell the story of Movie Pass through the podcast, and we narrate. Can we also play the guys? The that, movie. That if was, I were to I guess, think that'd be confusing. If I were to guess, movies. Movie Pass was made by two guys, <laughs> probably, and they were both. Neither one idiots. had the heart to tell the other <laughs> yeah. one. Ugh, bad idea. I think it would be confusing if we played uh, if we played the pa- played those guys. But I think this is something that we can bring Ben and Matt, and they can play the two guys. And this is how we become friends, and we narrate it. Well, famously in 80 for Brady, the mm-hmm, game mm-hmm. is essentially narrated by the by two podcasters, yeah. played by huge, Alex Moffat. Huge get for them that they and get Rob to, Corddry. <laughs> huge get that they get the podcasters get to call the Super Bowl. That was my favorite part of the movie. <laughs> and uh, who is oh Austin Hooper scored touchdown? They're like Hoop. Who is this? Who even is this guy? Like you're calling you're the calling Super, Super Bowl. Bowl. You don't know who Austin Hooper is, my guy. Damn, that's incredible. By, by the way, massive stray caught by I Austin know. Hooper. It's like I'm an NFL, not player. a nobody. Like <laughs> good NFL tight end. There's like six good tight ends, and he's one of them. Boy, oh boy. So you you saw Eddie Ferrari? No. Oh, yeah, I, just, I just told I saw you about it. You. Yeah, dude, it's it's a pretty good movie. I like it. There are so many movies that I just never have to watch because I feel like I've seen them. Um, the Bear is back next week. I know. I'm very excited. I do. I don't know if we've talked about this on the podcast. I have some concerns about the Bear. Do you know? Does this that there this, was an actual bear around mm-hmm. us recently? No. Oh yeah. No. But no. But uh, do you know what I'm talking about? Which means if you don't, then uh, then we haven't had the conversation. What's the concern? That the bear, it, this season of the bear, from the trailers, it looks like it's going upscale, uh. and, I, and I don't like that. Like I thought that the bi- the the big hook of last season, hustle was, and bustle, right? Hustle and Grinding bustle, it out. and and like a world renowned like Michelin rated chef is like playing below his play his pay grade. Mm-hmm for the family restaurant like i like that that hook and that story a lot and like they seem to be turning a corner and from the early looks at it it's like he's doing high scale food or upscale food yeah because they're opening that restaurant i know but like i i I don't want to see them do upscale food and he's taking that kid's ideas because they're good yeah it got him that good review i know but like i I do want to see them stick to the roots a little bit and yeah, and like maybe it's a little bit of misdirection. Maybe it's like they try to go that way and it doesn't hit in the, in the in Chicago. But I don't know. Like I, I'm I'm gonna hold off, but I do have some concerns. And the bar is obviously very high because the Bear season one was incredible. I needed a little energy boost yesterday, and I didn't want to drink more coffee. So I watched episode seven. I watched episode seven of the Bear, and let me tell you million percent did the trick i was like falling asleep and then i put that on and it was that was smelling salts for the the entire face if you wanted to fall asleep you could have watched the birthday party episode oh because they Xanax. drug yeah, oh yeah they, yeah yeah, they, yeah. They drug all the kids by accident i think that's the episode in which a uh, friend of the podcast chris wataski says busted makes me feel good <laughs> Uh, it was his birthday recently, by the way. Happy birthday to friend of the podcast, Chris Wataski. Hell yeah, brother. Uh, happy birthday. I know we miss you, pal. Instagram. Yeah, what a cutie. Saw on Instagram. He, he is that, famously he's a, a cutie. A cute guy, but he's becoming like his parents. He's, you know yeah, this? He's yeah, getting old. That's right. Per those uh, commercials. Those progressive commercials. Yeah. Um, I do, on, on the note of that episode of uh, of the bear you want to stab me no i want to i want to make a a declaration i think that oliver platt is one of the most underrated actors in hollywood he's a a shade above when this mf shows up in the movie you know it's going to be a good one or whatever yeah yeah. because we're like that's oliver platt but he's great but he is often or i guess just twice a guy who knows about food he plays a guy who knows about food very well yeah, what? Sh- I mean, like Chef. in the bear, he doesn't play a guy who knows about food. He just plays a guy who is like involved in a restaurant financially. Yeah. I hope that guy knows about food. Just financially, he, he's he's not saying he Mark Cuban doesn't know about basketball because he would tell you he does. He would tell you he does, but like he's just a guy who has money. Bob Odenkirk is in the season of the bear. That makes sense. Who do you think he plays? Food critic. I uh, can see him playing a food critic. 
Mm. It makes sense that Bob Odenkirk would be looped in with this group because famously Chris Wataski is represented by Bob Odenkirk's wife. I didn't know that. Yes. I remember Chris okay. Wataski said it on the podcast Brunch. It also makes sense because Bob Odenkirk has worked with uh, people who run restaurants. For what? Uh, Gus Spring. That is very true. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, he, he's perfect for the bear. And, but I, I, I understand, though, that the bear would want to kind of level up because I loved the bear, but I had people watch it after all the hype, watch it and say, I loved it, but it wasn't that good. And I was like, oh, really? it, I didn't think it was like an incredible show. Oh, I, I it was, loved I, it. I thought it was incredible. I thought the first season was incredible. There, I, I loved it. I don't know if it was like the best. I think that it is one of those shows that you watch and you're like, wow, I love this. Not yep. thinking that it's the greatest thing in the world. And then once people meet it, it, it has these huge things. Like, like when people watched Ted Lasso and they were like, wait, what? This isn't that good. I don't and know. I was like, the bear was never like, said it was. The bear, the bear was like one of my top two or three recommended TV shows from last year. Yeah. I mean, I don't know who, how many people saw it and didn't like it. Maybe they thought it, maybe it would be too stressful for some folks. But I mean, it should be too stressful for me. But I fucking like it. Exactly. Stop being a... An old B word. No, you're not being a B word <laughs> if you don't watch something that is that's gonna like Disagree. fuck with you. B word. Yeah, no, they, there was a lot of anxiety in episode seven uh, for sure. Speaking of, uh, you wanted me to watch uh, Black Mirror. Black Mirror. New episodes this week. I haven't been able to do it yet because we didn't get the. Do we get the correct number of patrons? No, I think we like were patriots. Uh, yeah, did we get the correct number of patriots. Uh, no, I think that we had four. So we were one shy. If one person now we need three more <laughs> because this is the, the, the juice is running. Yeah. No, the juice is running. Yeah, uh, yeah. We finished just shy. Only got so many patrons. So if you're not signed up for the Patre Patreon, please sign up. Patreon.com slash Listen to Brunch. It will force DJ to watch uh, Black Mirror. I guess at this point you'd probably just have to watch like one of the new episodes. As yeah. opposed to going back. I've been going back and watching a bunch of the old ones. It's they're they're great. They're so good. It's such a good show. It got bad um recently, but or like the last time that they released new episodes, like the Miley Cyrus one wasn't very good. And um uh, you know, I wasn't uh, crazy uh, about uh, the Anthony Mackey one. But I'm very excited for this new season. I hope that we can talk about it next week. If not, it's on you, the listener, because you didn't sign up for the Patreon and force DJ's hand. Something uh Black Mirror adjacent though. I found, I don't know why this was targeted to me on TikTok, but uh, it's an account named uh, Jose Monkey. Jose Monkey? I think. Okay. Uh, people send him videos of themselves. So, like, they'll stand outside. Like, I'll go in your backyard, take a video, say, Jose Monkey, tell me where I am. And by watching the video, he finds out exactly where you are, and he does this oh, to show, like, it's a geo guesser guy. Maybe, yeah, to show like the dangers of posting oh, really? videos in certain places or whatever. And I watched a couple, and I was like, "Yo, I don't feel good." I actually sent you a video by the geo, geo guesser guy last week, and you you ignored it. But it, and I, I assume that you like Maybe didn't know what was why? going on. Yeah, it could be why you're getting the algorithm, um, but. There was a person who posted a photo that was like, I just had the best bagel in the world, and I ain't telling any of you motherfuckers oh, where I saw, it is. Oh, I saw, yeah, they're, 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 but that was like a thread, right? Yeah. I, I Typically, if somebody says, check out this thread, Fair, there's a lower not, chance I'm getting it. It's like, I ain't reading all that, but... Yeah, uh, happy yeah, for so, you. Yeah. So th uh, this GeoGuessr guy was like, I'm going to find out where this guy got this bagel, and I'm going to tell all of you, because he, he, he doesn't okay, like Okay, so this Jose like Monkey guy is not as mean as the guy you're talking about but i that's already not, like the, that's you, not mean though like if somebody's trying to gatekeep some shit like a good uh, bagel yeah true like you're being an asshole if you're not telling people where to get that bagel true but blowing up somebody's spot is also i, I he's fighting fire with fire i think he's fighting the good fight so he found out where he he not only found out where that guy was eating the bagel he found out where he was sitting when he took the picture <laughs> and and uploaded it and i was like you were eating this thing this is what you ordered this is where you were sitting and by the way i got the restaurant to name the bagel after me so <laughs> yeah really yeah so he was like if you want to order that bagel ever again you have to order my name <laughs> i love that. that is an incredible fucking move what a great move. Yeah. I've uh yeah, I mean I'm I'm pretty happy with my 
weaken algorithming. Let let me. Uh, I have I have successfully shifted my Instagram algorithm. Still still dealing with some issues on the Twitter front. I have been blocking some accounts because I have just been seeing gr- grisly murders oh, and grisly injuries. I saw a guy with his leg chopped off this week as I opened Twitter, and I was like, "What Gross. the fuck, dude?" And I had to immediately block the account, but. Have very happy to report my Instagram algorithm is now just fucking cute animals. All you have to do is subscribe to like one channel on Instagram, and that's just all you get. So I just got like a bunch of cute animals and uh, Nikki Cass. I was going to say we got to shout out Nikki Cass. I fucking love that kid. He just everything just fucking makes me smile. If you don't follow him on Instagram, he's Nikki Cass, and he makes a lot of videos. And what's brilliant, this is where. I'm like just jealous that he thought of this. He makes videos out of the fact that he made a video. Yeah. So he'll do a he'll make a video in his backyard and then make a video <laughs> pretending to be his neighbor watching him make that video. <laughs> it's so good. And it's so fucking good. My favorite character, we haven't discussed this, but my favorite Nikki Cass uh thing is the pizza guy, but my second favorite Nikki Cass thing is the neighbor watching my, my, this video. My favorite one is the neighbor. Do you know the, so the, the pizza guy I'm talking about? I don't think so. He is always, uh, he's <laughs> tossing the dough using a towel and he's taught to be like, what's that? No pepperoni. Those go quick. Those go quick. Maybe I'll give you some dough. You can make it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I can make a fresh one for you in 20 minutes. You no, got it, buddy. My my, sec- my second favorite one is uh, the uh, like the the landscaper, like the summer job guy. Oh, that guy. Rocks. That was a, I think that was a one off though. But yeah. the- no, he did, I, I I've done a deep dive. He's done a few of those. Uh, I I've like come around on Nikki Cast because I remember uh, I think that he did some stuff for Barstool for a while, and he used to always do it with like the face filter. Or like he has like yeah. the fucked up face. I don't like and, those and ones. I don't like those ones. And he kept doing those over and over and over again. And I was like, all right, enough of this guy. Mm. But like he's doing them as himself and he's doing a bunch of different characters and they're very funny. His impressions are like pretty spot on when he does a character. So absolutely love that kid. Uh, it seems like he's having a great time. I hope that he uh, finds all the success and happiness in the world. I also am jealous. I like that uh, the... Uh, Almost Friday, and I don't know. But I feel like I feel like someone I know had some sort of beef with the Almost Friday people, but I don't remember or know enough about it. All I know is I see their clips on Instagram, and they make me laugh so hard. They have a podcast where two of them, one of them's a Boston kid, uh, they just do characters, and that is another thing I'm jealous of. Is that a Friday beers thing? Yeah, it's called it's Almost like an Friday. Offshoot, offshoot. I think Almost Friday is like the name of the company or something. Oh, okay. But uh, the two kid, one of them is uh, uh, Will, and the other kid, and then the other kid is the one from Boston. You know who I'm talking about? The uh, Boston PD. He does right, <laughs> yeah. right. Uh, they both just do characters, and they're so fucking funny. Yeah. And I uh, the. If, if, PD, put your hands up and let me suck on your toes. If that's, <laughs> that's as dark like as my Instagram my algorithm is getting, if like Nikki Cass and those <laughs> two kids are as as bad as Instagram is being to me, I will absolutely take it. I also will shout out. I like this where we just discuss what we're liking yeah. on the socials these days. Uh, why can't I find him? He, I've sent you a bunch of his things. Uh, it is. I got it right here. Uh, br- Hold on. His name is uh, oh Palmer Trolls. Yes, the, the that clip is hilarious. The, the dude that used to sue him and his friend used to intentionally sue each other <laughs> to get on court TV. <laughs> so just, great, just to win five thousand dollars. Falling into like every like lame TV trope. <laughs> I don't know so though. Good. So, so like, there's a guy on Instagram. He said that uh, that court TV would pay. Yeah, the winner. Yeah, like, uh, which makes sense. Like, why else would you go on Court TV and, like, air out your dirty laundry and, like, have those embarrassing moments for everybody to watch? So they'd go on and throw the case attention. every time. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. I, I've been popping off a little bit on Instagram because of the, there's a Count and Crows mm-hmm. one, and that's at, like, maybe like a million really? and a half right now really yeah fuck yeah and but again it it doesn't have the payoff 
Nicole Yang told me this. Uh, TikTok has a bigger payoff. If something you do goes viral, fo- followers fly oh, in. Yeah. People are very liberal with we clicking saw that follow. With, with, yeah. uh, with the uh, the Taylor thing that we put on TikTok and it kind of blew up. Like we got hundreds of followers. Yeah, not the case. with. So I, I maybe got like 300 followers out of uh, this Counting Crows thing. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think that makes sense though because the the timeline factor of Instagram is more structured like if you follow somebody you're gonna see their shit i think on tiktok if you follow somebody it's like you might see their shit or you might not so it doesn't really matter if you follow follow them tiktok that's been my experience i don't understand it but Mm -hmm. like it is what it is i also gotta i gotta get off my ass on youtube because i was making very good pace to becoming a partner on youtube and I was like, yeah, well, whatever. I'm making good pace. I'll do stuff later. They have made the. Do you know this? That YouTube lowered the yeah, I required. Did yeah, I think we might qualify as like. So brunch, brunch probably now. already does. I probably need to make like one more video on my own to get there. So if you're not following us, I think that you probably are following us on YouTube if and not, get Instagram. On there. Anyway, I still have a pathetically low number of Instagram followers for how well my Counting Crows content does. On there, where are you at? Like eight thousand? Instagram? Yeah, not even close. Really? I'm not at? even at four thousand. Really? Which is ridiculous. Damn. Yeah, and I it's, I. it's very hard to grow on Instagram, in my experience. Yeah, it's get get us there. Follow yeah. everybody. Uh, get on Patreon. If anybody, I don't know. We haven't been populating the Patreon as much. Uh, I might, if anybody wants it, shout out Rachel and Stan. Uh. And any other Bruntouchables who may have shown up to Idle Hands this past Saturday, I played some music and uh, some Bruntouchables came and that was awesome. There was a downpour. Did they come to the show or did they come at the show? They, who knows? (laughs) That's their business. I wasn't wasn't there. I don't know how many many people were really enjoying the show, but if if, if so. It was Idle Hands' biggest... I don't know if I'm telling tales out of schools. I, I was I was surprised at how many people were there. Not 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 to be offensive. Yeah, but it was fucking pouring outside. So when I saw the videos of people like taking videos and saw how many people were out there under the umbrellas, I was like, wow, hell yeah! So it was. I'll say during like the rainy part, it was very well attended, mm-hmm. and then as the day you went and on Taylor Swift then as the day, th- iconic performances in the rain if you think i didn't say that during the <laughs> performance you're crazy uh but then, then as the day went on and the weather got nicer i'd since left uh, i had to go watch the champions league uh as the day went on even way more people came wow. so like there was like there, there, i would say there was a solid crowd when uh, we were playing but then more and more but it was i th- i believe it was their biggest uh post covid day other than Oktoberfest. Wow, hell yes. So that was pretty great. I'll probably get back there and uh, play there again, but the I'll have show to show was... up and we'll have to do Steal My Plane. Oh, that would rock. <laughs> there was, so if anybody wants any, there are some videos I can uh, post from that. Maybe I'll put it on the Patreon. Only if people want it. Uh, I did, My one of my nephews really got in, or my, one of my nephews was uh, watching the movie frozen two and he was singing this song that came on and i was fucking blown away by how good a song it was so like my sister went on saturday and brought my nephews and uh they were like yelling requests and Mm -hmm. stuff and i was like oh i can do i was like i'll I, i heard that one song you were doing the other day so i pulled up the lyrics and just like tried to play it and I hope it was a charming shit show, but it was just a fucking shit show. Like I just started playing a song that I did not know how to fucking play. And I was actually trying to do it well. Yeah. I wasn't like making fun of it or whatever. Fucked up a million times. <laughs> said fuck probably like 300 times. It was a fucking blast though. Good time. We played uh, We played a couple of Wonders songs. I did see that. We had to walk. We had to leave though after that thing you do because it was just pouring my some one of my guitars smells like absolute shit because it got rain all over it. Oh really? Yeah. I didn't know what like a guitar would smell like yeah. if it got kind of wet. Me neither. Doesn't smell good. Okay. 